Good morning everyone. So my presentation is titled Buyo and the Quid in the Narratives of Early Western Southeast Asian Intercultural Encounters. Uh, basically, the aim of this presentation is try to locate the cultural significance of Buyo or the battle plant and its primary use as a quid in the narratives of Western explorers in the Philippines and in the Southeast Asian region. Uh, obviously, we all know that the advent of Philippine civilization, just like all other civilization in the world, uh, began with humans' great connection with their arboreal environment as hunters and gatherers. No, millennia ago, humans of today's Philippines relied so much no, on their arboreal environs for all of their necessities like food, their clothing, their shelters, uh, and even their technologies. Now, given that, it has to be emphasized that plants indeed are an important and indispensable part of human experience. This is so true because our history is so influenced by plants that many of our historic events in our history involve or are connected to plants. No? For example, uh, the sugarcane. As a valuable crop for the Filipinos, sugarcane carries stories of Filipino history and heritage. You know, the, ba the Basi Revolt of the Ilocanos, for instance, would have not happened without the Basi from the sugarcane. The tobacco, for example, we know this crop has been monopolized by the Spanish colonial government. In schools, we are very familiar with the tobacco monopoly. Also, we have the Balete tree. We know obviously this tree to be a historically significant or say a notorious no, to the collective imagination of the pre-colonial Filipinos as the dwelling no, of the supernatural entities. Uh, with all these, we can thereby safely say uh, that somehow our plants can tell our history. So today I will try to describe to you our cultural history uh, through another heritage plant, which I know most of the millennials today are no longer familiar with no? because its primary use has already been buried into oblivion. This plant was considered to be one of the most extensive plant species uh, enjoyed in the archipelago and in the region before and during the Spanish colonial period of the Philippines and actually was also considered to be one of the ubiquitous herbs no, in every Spanish and Filipino household and store during those times. And that plant is called the betel leaf or buyo. Buyo no, or betel leaf or piper betel is a dioecious, no, meaning it has only one sex, no, either male or female. So that also means it cannot reproduce alone. No? So they have to be propagated uh, asexually through cutting. It is a vine or a creeper plant of the family uh, Piperaceae no? that produces a smooth, shining green color and a heart shape, uh, or in botany, we call it cordage shape, aromatic leaves that are commonly grown on a trellis. No? The words highlighted in red are phytomorphological identifications of betel plant are extracted from our historical sources, which may lead us to say that indeed we can use historical sources to study many things, uh, including botany. Well, according to several evidences, historical, epigraphic records, uh, philological and archaeological evidences, uh, the original home of the battle plant was the Southeast Asian region and not the Indian subcontinent where it is extensively used as well. Uh, one evidence to this fact is the word betel itself actually came from the Malay word betila or leaf, no? which was transliterated by the Portuguese explorers uh, during their early exploits in Southeast Asia. In the Philippines, we, the betel leaf is locally known as buyo, no? but it is also called ikmo or itmo by the Tagalogs, Buyo kin Cebuano, Dalit among the Warais, Gawed in Ilocano, Lawar in Pangasinan, Samatin Kapampangan, and Mamaan in Maranao. Uh, and obviously, uh, we know that uh, Betel's primary purpose is as a wrapper no, for both the areca nut, we call it locally bunga, no, and we also call it Betel nut, though it actually doesn't come from the betel leaf or the betel plant no? together with the tobacco and lime no? and when you concocted them together you are going to produce betel quid or pan no? in the indie culture or in Filipino we call it nganga. 
So here, we clarify that betta leaf or plant is the buyo, no? and the quid is the nganga. We clarify this because many are confusingly thinking that buyo and nganga are the same, uh, but strictly speaking, on the basis of our lexicon, they are different. Well, I do not exactly know when this misconception started, but clearly, uh, even in some Spanish uh, sources of the 19th century, uh, buyo, uh, the word buyo was already used. Uh, to, to refer nga nga. So here, uh, we clarify their distinction. Okay, so as I have said before, the original home of the betel plant is the Southeast Asian archipelago, no? particularly the Philippines. This means that long before the natives' contact with the Western explorers, uh, they had already been practicing the betel chewing tradition or pag nga nga. Uh, early chronicles uh, support that betel quid chewing was an expansive tradition in the Southeast Asian archipelago and the Pacific. Uh, this was affirmed by Pigafetta, Morga, Rios Coronel, and Dampier. Now, Pigafetta himself, actually in 1521, had multiple sightings of betel chewing tradition. No? For example, in Mazawa, um, Palawan, and in Tidore. And he observed this both among the ordinary men and the royals. No, other sailors had also observed this, such as uh, Pedro Fernandez de Quiroz in Solomon Islands, William Dampier in Mindanao, and Charles Wicks in Sulu. So here is an excerpt from Pigafetta's description of how the natives of Mazawa had prepared their uh, nga, nga Okay, so since betel chewing was widely practiced then, uh, we can expect no, that betel itself really meant something to our ancestors and it did really embody great cultural significance. So let us enumerate what are some cultural significance or uses uh, of betel quid according to the historical narratives of the Westerners uh, during their early encounters with the natives of the Philippines. So first cultural significance we can highlight, betel quids were offered to show hospitality and friendship. Uh, when a visitor comes to a house, no, the, the native host has to offer the visitor with the nganga. No, and they prepare it meticulously because uh, the nganga is a technical material in pakikipagkapwa tao. No? Dainter in his narratives appreciated this social custom when he was warmly welcomed in Mindanao. Second, uh, betel quids were offered during religious rituals. Now, for example, uh, the Tagalogs offer quids to appease and maintain the favor of their deities. Uh, the, the Kapampangans offer quids to appease the malevolent Nuno from taking vengeance. Now, because uh, Nuno's vengeance sometimes were in form of paranormal sicknesses. Now, the Zambals, on the other hand, offered quids so that the soul of the deceased person uh, may leave uh, its relatives, no? for they say uh, that the said soul always follows them until the said ritual was offered. No? The Mindanaoans in their pagkayog ritual include uh, the betel quid in their offering no? to appease their deity Maudug, while the Bagobos include the quids in their tambaro uh, offering to request healing. Third, here the betel leaves alone were used as uh, embalming preservatives. The juice of the betel plant were used to anoint the dead body. They injected through the mouth so that it penetrated the whole body. Well, uh, this makes sense no? because if we are going to scientifically examine, uh, examine buyo's phytochemical content, it has eugenol and malondialdehyde contents that are great antioxidants no, and anti-inflammatory and antifungal chemicals uh, that can inhibit oxidation and therefore prevent the decay of the body. You see, uh, though our ancestors do not have science of the West, uh, they discovered it to themselves that betel extract uh, was actually a great antioxidant agent. Okay, so fourth, we have uh, betel quids were used to vow for love. This was basically a ritual wherein two lovers eat respective pieces of nganga, chew it very well, and after they chew it, uh, they spit it and exchange their sapa or the chewed quid, no? somehow similar to the idea of the blood compact, uh, but in this ritual, they don't exchange blood but saliva. No? According to Jose Honorato Lozano, the exchange of the sapa uh, between a woman and the man was a test no, of affection. 
Okay, so fifth cultural significance that betel quid is that uh, betel quids were used no, as peace offering or for apologizing. When a person violated or offended someone, the offender who wants to ask for the forgiveness of the offended will have to offer a platito of meticulously made nganga. When the offended is ready to forgive, he will accept it. But if he's not ready, he returns it. Uh, this custom was observed by the Dominican missionaries in Anam or in today's Vietnam. Uh, similarly to this idea is our sixth, uh, sixth cultural significance of the nganga, that is, battle quids were used to restore the honor of the adulterous offender. You know, if in the former, uh, buya was presented as a gift to ask for forgiveness from somebody. This time, uh, buya was not only used as a present, no, but already as a restorative penalty for the dishonorable sin of adultery. Here, the quids were dipped into the blood of a slaughtered chicken, no, an animal so commonly used uh, in the Austronesian world, as an offering. Afterwards, they make the culprit and the adulterer eat the blooded quid to restore both their tarnished honor. This eating, however, was no doubt no, part of imposing the bitterness of punishment. No? As, of course, eating a quid with stenchy fresh chicken blood was not easy to do. But only through that they claim one can justly restore his or her dignity in the community. Uh, Enrique Rodriguez Solis observed this in Parago or Palawan. As seventh cultural significance of this dainty was its notoriety as being a material of deceit. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, a betel quid was a great material for pakikipagkapwa tao. That is why it is presented during social occasions, uh, during religious ceremonies, or when someone wants to ask or uh, wants to apologize. Uh, because of the quid's positive connotation and the cultural and social imagination of the people, they always assume that a person giving or offering a quid always had uh, good intentions. And because the, that person does not suspect that a quid may carry harm, poison was sometimes concocted with it. So, no, for instance, Pigafetta had it narrated that uh, when Francisco Serrano came one day to Tidore to trade cloves, the king of Tidore had him poisoned with the betel leaves because of the because no the king of Tidore secretly hated him for helping Tidore's rivals rivals kingdom kingdom uh, Ternate to gain control in the region. Morga even articulated this in his Ossesos. So to conclude my presentation, there are three main takeaways I want to leave. Uh, first, that is, is that plants are fundamental to human experience. Uh, therefore, they can be used as reference in tracing humans' cultural history. Second, the significance of the betel plant among the Philippines and our Southeast Asia neighbors uh, can be seen from its ubiquity in the Western narratives of their early encounters with the natives of the region. And third, uh, aside from being a mere masticatory delicacy, betel quids no, were, were also a part of a vast cultural tradition of the Filipinos and the Southeast Asian natives prior to the Western encounter. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much.